in this class i would like to discuss various other tests which are used to objectively analyze the vasculature of the pulp that is laser doppler flowmetry and pulse oximetry these tests objectively measure the vasculature of the pulp and this is, these tests are considered to be more accurate than cold and electrical pulp testing due to the fact that the vitality of a tooth depends upon the vasculature the intactness of the vasculature and health of vasculature rather than the neural supply so it's obvious that these tests are considered to be more accurate than the other tests available for evaluating the vitality so first we'll discuss about laser doppler flowmetry and then we'll move on to pulse oximetry so laser doppler flowmetry termed as ldf works on the principle of a doppler effect so before going into that laser doppler flowmetry the objective is to measure the velocity of the red blood cells which are moving within the microvasculature so the objective is basically to find out the presence of circulation within the microvasculature of a pulp so laser doppler flowmetry works on doppler principle so before understanding doppler principle let me schematically represent the functioning of this laser doppler flowmetry so this basically contains a diode which emits infrared rays so these ir rays are made to incident on the tooth of interest and then we have a sensor on the opposite side which contains a microprocessor so these infrared rays when they are incident on to the pulp which contains the microvasculature what happens is the moving rbcs or red blood cells present within the pulp shift the frequency of that incident rays or infrared rays so this term is very important so frequency shifting of these infrared rays is done by the moving red blood cells so because of this shift in frequency we get an incident or a reflected light which is detected by the microprocessor so this shift in frequency of the infrared rays is measured by this sensor which gives us an idea on the velocity of the red blood cells based on which we can evaluate the vitality so the principle is simple we have a diode emitting an infrared ray and then which is uh, incident on the tooth of interest and then we have a sensor on the opposite side we have a moving red blood cells within the microvasculature these moving red blood cells cause a frequency shifting present within the infrared rays that is infrared ray might have a specific frequency that will be shifted the moment it uh, encounters a moving red blood cell which is detected by the sensor so based on the shift in frequency we analyze the velocity of red blood cell which helps us to uh, get to a conclusion on the status of the pulp that is the vitality of the pulp most importantly laser doppler flowmetry is of much importance in cases where there is recent history of trauma so wherein other tests usually fail like cold test heat test or even electrical pulp testing we do not get accurate results in case of recent traumatic injuries but these tests can accurately predict the status of the pulp even though the vasculature is compromised because of this mechanism of action so however in spite of several advantages accuracies and reproducibility of the test the drawback is that it's time consuming and there is really no such proper equipment which can be used in a dental setup and in one study they tried to create a custom made jig and uh, reproduce this procedure clinically and it took more than 1 hour for the researchers to perform the test and to obtain the results which is clinically not viable uh, right now so maybe in future we might come across a day wherein this test can be completed in a span of few minutes who knows it can be used as a replacement for cold test and electrical pulp testing so this is in brief about laser doppler flowmetry and now moving on to the other test that is pulse oximetry so this pulse oximetry is usually uh, commonly used in a medical scenario for measuring the pulse rate 
as well as the oxygen concentration of a vascular vascular tissue so this pulse oximeter uses two uh, lights that is a red light and infrared light the wavelength of red light is 660 nanometers and the wavelength of infrared light is in the range of 940 nanometers so similar to the laser doppler flowmetry we have a pulse oximetry emitting uh, two lights and these lights are incident onto a tooth so let me draw this again here so when these lights are incident on a tooth we have within the microvasculature oxygenated hemoglobin and deoxygenated hemoglobin and then we have a sensor on the opposite side of the tooth which is connected to a monitor so this monitor gives us the pulse rate as well as the oxygen concentration so the principle here is that the moment we incident these red and infrared rays depending upon the ratio of the oxygenated hemoglobin and deoxygenated hemoglobin particular amount of light is absorbed and particular amount of light is reflected back so that amount of light which is absorbed is measured by this sensor and it gives us directly the pulse rate as well as the oxygen concentration so this is the working principle of the pulse oximetry i would like to repeat the working principle here the moment we incident these uh, light rays depending upon the concentration of oxygen oxygenated hemoglobin and deoxygenated hemoglobin different amounts of these light uh, red and infrared lights are absorbed and the residual light is reflected back onto the sensor and this sensor depending upon the amount of light absorbed by these uh, by this vasculature gives us the pulse rate as well as the oxygen concentration based on which we can analyze the vitality so even just uh, similar to that of laser doppler flowmetry this pulse oximetry can also be used to evaluate the status of pulp even in case of trauma so gopi krishna et al have done extensive studies on this pulse oximeter and they have designed a custom made jig or uh, and sensor which attaches to individual tooth and they have done extensive studies and they proved that the results obtained by pulse oximetry are reliable accurate and reproducible even when compared to electrical pulp testing as well as dermal test etc so this is in brief about laser doppler flowmetry and pulse oximetry so i would like to summarize that laser doppler flowmetry and pulse oximetry work on the principle of analyzing the vitality of a tooth based on its vasculature so it objectively analyzes the vasculature of the pulp since it's objective it's considered to be more accurate than the subjective fi findings which are uh, seen in case of dermal tests and electrical pulp testing so we have laser doppler flowmetry and pulse oximetry laser doppler flowmetry working on the doppler principle once you understand the doppler principle the mechanism of action can be understood easily so we have a diode with infrared rays and then there, there is moving red blood cells within the vasculature which cause frequency shifting and this frequency shift is detected by the sensor which gives us the velocity of the moving RBCs present within the microvasculature based on which we can analyze the status of the pulp and then we have pulse oximetry with two different lights red light and infrared light 660 nanometers red and infrared 940 nanometers which is incident onto the tooth and we have a sensor depending upon the ratio of the oxygenated hemoglobin hemoglobin and deoxygenated hemoglobin present within the microvasculature particular amount of red and infrared light is absorbed by the tissue and the rest is reflected back and this sensor detects the reflected light and then gives us the pulse rate and oxygen concentration accordingly and the most single most greatest advantage using these techniques or using, uh, using these tests is the fact that even in case of recent history of trauma we can evaluate the status of the pulp unlike your electrical pulp testing or cold testing so this is in brief about various tests used to analyze the status of the pulp thank you